Hi there, everyone. Meteorologist Robert Spetta here with you on the 9th of August, 2013, right around 1100 Philippine Standard Time, uh, 1200 Japan Standard Time. If you're watching this off towards Japan, what we have is a rapidly developing tropical system. At this time, uh, it is going to be upgraded. Uh, to a tropical storm will be called Utor uh, once it does so by the Japan Meteorological Agency. Uh, Bagasa already has put a name on this area though and it is called Labuyo. Fun fact, that actually means onion in uh, Tagalog. So that is what's currently going on with the storm system. Now JTWC has also upgraded it and it has a lot of the ingredients in place for further intensification. Right now, once we look at the satellite imagery, you can see five to 10 knots over top of it. Aloft, we have a lot of divergence aloft, so that's indicating good outflow around this storm system. You have the high pressure ridge off there towards the north that's gonna keep it on the westerly projection. And also a lot of good moisture inflow coming in from the south. You can see this big burst of convection down here. Well, that's gonna feed into this. Now, on the flip side of it though, we do have a lot of dry air there into the north. So that could keep it from becoming a beast otherwise if you didn't have that intense high pressure filtering and a little bit of dry air on the northern periphery. But I think that all these other ingredients are going to be outweighing that throughout the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. And my personal thought on this, not official, is that we're going to be looking at a likely typhoon making landfall here into Luzon going through the week and into the early part of next week. And this is actually warning number two from uh, JTWC. They expect also a typhoon making landfall here right around Apari just clipping the northern portions of Luzon. Um, my thought on that though is I think it's a little bit too far towards the north. I'm still looking at a landfall at least from everything I've looked at farther down here towards the south around Isabella even farther south uh, very well could be possible tracking across northern Luzon here um, where I do think that the impacts are going to be actually just put a map together on this. It's across much of uh, northern Luzon on the east and the west coast you can see some typhoon strength winds damaging winds I put here in the orange. Uh, the green area is indicating the heavier rainfall. Also, all the way down there towards the south, also expect some rainfall to come on shore. But uh, that's just really what some of the outer rain bands, even Taiwan, could see that. The bulk of the showers there in the central portions of northern Luzon, Manila, you could also see it as well. So I have a pretty broad area, and also it's just because we're at the genesis stage of this. But you can see the center of my cone of air I wrote up here, um, basically there into... Uh, central portions of Luzon, not so far off there towards the north. It could change, but there's a few ideas going into this, and one of my main ideas is the uh, streamline analysis, or the overall background flow. How that is going to be carrying the storm. Now, right now, we still have that high-pressure ridge anchored over, wow, that was a terrible ridge. Uh, we still have that high-pressure ridge anchored over southeastern China, Taiwan, and the southern Japanese islands. So this rotating towards the north, or recurving towards the north, seems out of the question. Following the flow, uh, you would see a Luzon landfall. So um, still, like I said, uh, that could lift a little bit farther off towards the north and we could see it move farther there towards the north. But at this time, Luzon straight transit, I don't really see it so much. Um, this is GFS model output for 18 uh, Zulu making a landfall here. Now this is going into early Monday morning. Uh, these winds really kicking up. The areas in the purple indicating typhoon strength winds as it does come ashore. And this is kind of what I really based my uh, track outlook on or those impact outlooks because this is going to come ashore have those destructive winds possibly now farther down towards the south granted if it doesn't track towards the south you're probably not going to see those winds so much down here really it's going to be remaining off there from apari down through isabella uh, even iligan you could see some destructive winds as it does continue to push ashore and then uh, Labuyo, uh, it's going to push across Luzon here, wrap those winds around, and you could see off there to Baguio uh, as well, those winds continuing to come ashore. So lots going on with the storm system. It's going to still pick up that moisture from Luzon Strait in the South China Sea. So it's not so much the winds, also the heavy rainfall out here. There's going to be a serious risk of flooding and landslides. A few areas here could see about two to 300 millimeters of rain. And remember, this is all still initial uh, thoughts on this, and really going through the next 24 to 48 hours, we're going to have more uh, confidence on the forecast track with this. But this is just showing the GFS with the JTWC track overlaid. And what we can see here is a GFS for the 18Z. I expect in that landfall there, but also you still have that moisture inflow. Like I mentioned, there's a risk of flooding down in portions of western Visayas because of that monsoonal inflow wrapping around this storm system once it pushes across Luzon there. And then it starts to move off there towards 
Hong Kong. Actually, uh, JTWC expected about 129 wins on warning number one there into Hong Kong. So um, there's a possibility of that happening. And even with this output, Taiwan, you would also see some heavy rain. And then we look at the nav gem output. And I want to show you this too because we got a Fujiwara effect going on in the long range as well. When a Fujiwara means is when you have two storm systems get side by side and they start to pinwheel around each other. Now, the nav gem, good news, a uh, very similar output than GFS, but they track it a little bit farther towards the north. They expect that ridge to weaken a little bit. And I think that's what JTWC is going off of as well as far as that farther north track. Um, so... There's a possibility of that still happening. Luzon Strait moves off there towards the Taiwan Strait, making landfall in Guangdong Province um, and off towards Fujian as well. But then look at this other area towards the east of Okinawa, and I think everybody in Okinawa is going to want to pay attention to this because you get a storm towards the west and possibly a storm towards the east. This one moving towards the north, this one moving towards the south. A mini high pressure here in the middle. Um, these two would rotate around it and kind of loop around if that output was to come uh, true. So interesting stuff. We might have a Fujiwara effect by next week. So uh, that is just one of the models picking up on this particular situation. So something to continue to keep an eye on here throughout the coming day. But that is all for right now, though, everybody. Uh, one other thing. This is not a tour yet. JMA has not upgraded. They are the official agency out here in the Western Pacific. So please do go check with them for more information on this storm system and everything else going on uh, across the Western Pacific as far as trauma. Topics, but gossip for local impacts, though, here in the uh, Philippines. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there, everybody.